Good morning, 434. Welcome to our Power and Victory morning devotional. Jeff Lewis coming to you live from Tampa Bay. This is our Jesus-loving, business-minded, entrepreneurial, real estate community. In the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 34, they sold land and homes and they laid the proceeds, profits, and commissions at the apostles' feet. So good morning. This is our Power and Victory morning devotional. We come and gather around God's anointed word. We're a community of business people that have gathered and we've actually partnered with what we're doing with Jesus, or hopefully we have. Today, we're gonna be talking to you about Arthur and Lewis Tappan. You say, who is Arthur and Lewis Tappan? Well, you're gonna find that out today. How many of you know God has placed many of you in business just as he has called some ministers into ministry, that it's a calling, that business is spiritual, that your business has a spiritual purpose to it. And today, I think you're going to be greatly encouraged. I think you're going to get vision today. You may be challenged today as you see these two brothers, William and Arthur Tappan, and what they did with their life. So good morning, everybody. So glad you're with us. We launched this community just about 10 months ago. Oh, about 700 of us in the real estate industry. Many others of you have now joined us. We're so glad you're here. You can share the broadcast. As today we talk to you about these two brothers in the early 1800s and the difference that they made and how they looked at their business. So, so glad you're with us. Grab yourself a beverage. We've been talking about the book of Acts. And we've been talking about God's power. We've been talking about what God wants to do with business people. And I'm just going to read a scripture to you to kind of kick us off today. And yesterday, if you didn't catch yesterday's broadcast in our private group, by the way, if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, you go ahead and click like, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. If you're watching this on the podcast, welcome to the Power and Victory Morning Devotional. We've been reading through the book of Acts. And whenever we open up the Bible, we give the Lord a shout because it's God's word. It's alive. It's active. It's God's breathe. It's God's power in written form. So on the count of three, we give the Lord a <laughs> woo. Lord, do what you do. And in the book of Acts chapter four, verse 34, which is where we actually birthed this marketplace ministry, it says this. From time to time, those who owned land and houses sold them. So here they were in the real estate industry, in the business. They had land. They sold land, calling all real estate people. What's up, Corey? What's up, Stacy? Good morning, everybody. Calling all real estate people. So from time to time, they owned lands or houses and they sold them, right? If you're in real estate, that's what you're doing. Dr. Sold, Mrs. Sold. Now listen what they did. And they took the money from the sales of their property and they put it at the apostles' feet. What did they do? They took the money from the sale of their property and they put it at the, prop, the, the apostles' feet. You'll see this Joseph, verse 36. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostle called Barnabas, later to become son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Good morning, Victoria. Good morning, everybody. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about two brothers, Lewis and Arthur Tappan. They're actually born up in New York. Now, many of you, how many of you ever heard of the first great awakening during the 1700s in the United States of America? Then you might have heard of the second great awakening during the 17, late 17 into the 1800s. You might have heard about a minister named Charles Finney. Charles Finney was an attorney who was greatly impacted with an encounter with God and he literally impacted the whole nation, even other nations, with his ministry. So you may have heard of Charles Finney. Charles Finney, there were stories where Charles Finney, the power of God was so powerful on Charles Finney that he would walk into a factory and literally everyone would hit their knees and just start confessing their sin. 
The Bible says, I mean, history says that 85% of the people who were converted to Jesus Christ during the ministry of Charles Finney stayed faithful to the Lord, right? How many people now, they pray a little sinner's prayer, oh, yeah, I was born again over and as they're, and we, we, got, we got a lot of people that had prayed a sinner's prayer, but have not stayed true to the Lord. So you may have heard of Charles Finney, but let me share with you a story today about a couple of people, a couple brothers in business that you may not have heard of, Arthur and Lewis Tappan. So join with me here. I'm going to read a little bit. Hey, Joel, what's up, everybody? You can share the broadcast. Welcome to our Power and Victory Morning Devotional. Yesterday, we shared a message, the heartbeat of an end-time entrepreneur. And today, I'm going to actually share a story of an actual two brothers. And I want you to see their impact. I'm, I believe you're going to be much inspired. Let me read a little bit to you here. Arthur and Lewis Tappan were brothers, business innovators in the silk trade in New York City in the early 1800s. Lewis was raised a Calvinist but became a Unitarian. Later, he had an encounter with God in which he returned to the faith of his childhood, a changed man. These are two brothers. They were now uh, business people in New York City. The Tappans, listen, listen, the Tappans determined to use their company's profit for Christian causes. Isn't that what we just read in the book of Acts? They sold land and homes and they took the money from the profit of their sales and laid it at the apostles' feet. Their businesses funded and managed various evangelical societies that distributed Bibles, tracts, Sunday school materials. They founded the Magdalene Society, which ministered to the unwed mothers in New York City. Wow. In 1833, Lewis Tappan read a biography of William Wilberforce, the British parliamentar parliamentarian used by God to bring down the slave trade. So he read something, his eyes. Listen, God could inspire something in you today. I believe God is going to inspire many business people today to literally take their business and make much impact, influence, and bring uh, help to those that are bringing the gospel. Let's keep reading. Tappan resolved to do whatever he could do to further the abolitionist cause in America, right? Getting rid of drunkards and alcoholism. Lewis Tappan helped form the American Anti-Slavery Society. From their business headquarters, the Tappans spearheaded fundraising drives for the anti-slavery movement, sponsored special speakers and revival meetings. They sponsored him with their money and they organized national mailings of abolitionist literature, mailings that went out from the north to the south to end slavery. Tappan sponsored an evening church service with blacks and whites fully integrated, unheard of even in the north. Remember, they were in New York City. So here are these brothers, they're in business. They have an encounter with God and they determined to use their company profits for Christian causes. So they gathered blacks and whites together in New York. Rioters gathered uh, around the Tappan's company store. A mob gathered outside their house, broke open a door. Sounds like what we just went through, right? Rioters vi vandalized their house, smashed windows, hurled their family's furniture into the street. In the center of the street, they set a fire to the Tappan's family belongings, including a large pile of bedding, pictures, furniture, window frames. There was major resistance. Some people were mad at these business people that had committed their business to what Jesus was doing in the earth. Tappan's family got out just in time. Tappan's founded the journal, The Human Rights. They founded it, a newspaper. They founded a newspaper. They, they, they funded revival meetings, a newspaper called The Emancipator, and a children's magazine called Slave's Friend. In a 10-month period, the society mailed over, remember this is in 1800, mailed over 1 million anti-slavery pieces, mostly paid for by the Tappan's business profit. So let me say this, mostly paid for by the Tappan's business profits. I label this today, where are the Arthur and Lewis Tappan's of today? You've heard of Martin Luther King Jr. You've probably have heard of the minister Charles Finney but maybe you had never heard of Arthur and Lewis Tappan. Let's keep reading. Predictably, slave owners were outraged at Lewis Tappan. 
the citizens of Charleston broke into the U.S. post office and hauled off mailbags. Sounds like our election we just had. They hauled off mailbags from New York City. Slavery supporters burned the abolitionist mailings under the hanging effigies of Tappan and other abol abolitionists. One Southerner offered a 50000 reward for Tappan's head. Some people didn't like these business people. They were having resistance. They were having opposition as if they were apostles, as if they were preachers. Huh, let's keep reading. In 1836, Lewis Tappan opened a mail package to discover a slave's ear, an ear of a slave. In another box, he was sent a piece of rope warning him he would be hung. Tappan responded to this by placing his breast pocket, by placing in his breast pocket his only weapon, the New Testament. Tappan wrote, we will persevere come life or death. You hear the backbone? Yesterday I preached to you the heartbeat of an end time entrepreneur. You can go watch that in our private group. If any fall by the hand of violence, other will continue to do the blessed work. They persecute one, thousands others will rise up. And today God is going to put inside of you the heartbeat of an end time entrepreneur, the heartbeat, the backbone of steel, the power of God. The, whole, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Something happened then in the providence of God. The hand of God was on him. Watch this. That focused national attention on the horrors of the slave trade. Here are business people. These were business people. They were in the silk trade. And God was using them to fund revival meetings, to fund newspapers. They started to make a difference even in even in slavery, keep the, the, the topics of the day. Listen to this. <clears throat> a, a floundering ship in the Atlantic was boarded by, U by the U.S. Navy. A group of Mendy Africans had overthrown the crew of the Cuban slave ship, the Amistad. Lewis Tappan came forward to take care of the prisoners and hired legal help. So maybe you've heard of the end of slavery, Abraham Lincoln. Have you ever heard of Lewis Tappan? Let's keep reading. In the courtroom, Lewis Tappan sat on a bench next to three little girls from the slave ship. You thought, well, maybe they made just some nice silk for nice clothes or a nice printing press or, hey, they had a nice real estate business. Now they're in court defending slaves' children. He befriended Sinkyu, the leader of rebel slaves. He provided the slaves with Bibles and literature. Lewis Tappan, we're talking to you today about two business people in the 1800s that made mucho impact across the world. Listen to this. Lewis Tappan was courageous, calling all courageous 434 members, sincere, but a naive religious man. He was a follower of Jesus who made available the wealth entrusted to him to serve the cause of Christ and freedom. What did he do? He made available the wealth that was entrusted to him to serve the cause of Christ in freedom. So 434, your hundred bucks in the offering, your tipping of God, your little, little giving God just this little bit. That's not what we're talking. That's not what these guys did. They entrusted the wealth that was given to them. Did you hear that? To the service of the cause of Christ in freedom. Let's keep reading. In 1839, the New York Herald compared him to Judas. The, the media was against him, and he deserved to be hung. Those of us who have experienced misrepresentation in the media should console ourselves at how wild it's been in comparison. Hey, has the media spoke out against you, right? Has there been, the Bible says that anyone who follows Christ shall have persecution. There should be people that are against you if you're making a strong stand like Willie, uh, like Arthur and Lewis Tappan. By the decisions of the court, the Africans appear to be set free, but President Van Buren asked the Supreme Court to reconsider the case. Tappan retained former President John Quincy Adams to argue their case before the Supreme Court. These guys are in the silk business. Now they're making massive impact in the anti-slavery movement. What kind of impact are you going to make? What's the items of the day that you in your business is going to make a difference? Adams won the case. Although Adam gets the credit, Adam wrote to Lewis Tappan, the captives are free, but thanks, thanks in the name of humanity and justice to you. 
You hear that? John Quincy Adams gave credit to these business people because without them, that wouldn't have happened. Tappan arranged for the Mendy Africans to return to their homeland, first because that was just, second, so they could spread the gospel of Jesus to their fellow countrymen. We're talking about two brothers, William and Arthur, I mean, Arthur and Louis Tappan in New York City in the early 1800s. And just like we read in the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 34 through 36, people took their business and they took it and connected it to what Jesus was doing in the earth. They sold land and homes and they laid the money at the apostles' feet. Now, what's remarkable is that none, none of this was what Lewis Tappan did for a living. In his day job, Lewis Tappan established, listen, the nation's first credit rating agency, the Wall Street and Merchant Exchange, which today goes by another name, Dun & Bradstreet. Now, I've read another article that they were outraged by the ungodly uh, usury, that people were being used and abused uh, for interest, and they decided to do something about it. Tappan put business profits into the Amistad Committee to spread anti-slavery information to other countries. He was a leader in the Underground Railroad, believing the fugitive slave law dishonored Christ. He helped slaves escape to freedom rather than returning them to slavery. For that, he could have done. He could have went to jail for years. What are you doing? What are you doing in business to advance the cause of Christ? When the Civil War ended and there was emancipa emancipation, if anyone deserved to retire, it was Tappan. So what did he do? He changed the name of the Amistad Committee to the American Missionary Association, which spearheaded missions in West Africa, East Asia, and the Br British West Indies. It also founded colleges for the Southern freed people, including Fisk University in Nashville, Berea College in Kentucky, and Howard University in Washington, D.C. Talk about making a difference. A number of the Amistad prisoners came to faith in Christ. There was a few surviving letters from the prisoners to Tappan. Listen, these prisoners who came to Christ, they were prisoners, they were slaves. Listen to their letter. One's name was Sinkyu. The one who stood in the courtroom and said, give us free, give us freedom. Keep in mind that this is, was written in English, which could be a third language for a Mendy African. So don't let the syntax mislead you. Dear sir, he's writing to this businessman. What have you got letters from men, women? How about mayors, governors, wrote you letters, even presidents. Thank you for what you've done for your nation, for the cause of Christ. Dear sir. Sinky and Mendy people pray for Mr. Tappan all the time. Sinky loved Mr. Tappan very much. And all Mendy people love Mr. Tappan very much. I know forget Mr. Tappan forever and ever. I know forget God because God helped Mr. Tappan in the Mendy people. Your friend, Sinky. Joel 434 is Acts 434. They sold land and homes, their business, and they laid the money at the apostles' feet. They attached their business, just what I'm reading to you right now, about two businessmen in New York City in the early 1800s. And then a letter was written to Lewis Tappan from a slave named Kina after his return to Africa. God is very great, very good and kind. We have been on great water. No danger fell upon us. Oh no, we never forget glorious God for these blessings. How joyful we shall be. I never forget you. May God be blessed. Our blessed Savior, Jesus Christ, has done wondrous works. Oh, dear Mr. Tappan, how I feel for this wondrous work. I cannot write so plain because the ship rolls. Pray, Jesus will hear you. And if never see you in this world, we'll meet you in heaven. These are slaves that these business people made an impact that touched other nations. And here me and you are reading about them hundreds of years later. Amistad is the story of one small part of Lewis Tappan's life. Listen to this. He was a follower of Christ. He did not go off into the woods to live a simple life. He didn't go into cemetery. He didn't have a microphone in his mouth. The highest place of impact is not the Sunday morning with a microphone in your mouth if God hasn't called you to that. Some of you, God's called you into business to make mucho impact. He worked hard to establish a profitable secular business and then use the greater part of the money, 
How much of the money? The greater part of the money generated by that business to glorify Christ by bringing love, material goods, hope, the gospel, and legal justice to the oppressed. To God be the glory. Now, why have I taken such valuable time to tell you this story? Because Lewis Tappan, like R.G. Letourneau, Stanley Tam, was a disciple who used money to make an eternal difference. 434. Are you hearing this? He used money, his business. I might even read you more tomorrow as you see the impact that they made. Let's keep reading. Tappan, Letourneau, and Tam weren't missionaries or pastors. They worked at secular jobs like our people do. We need to be inspired to raise the bar, to break the chains of mediocrity. People like us in every age, in the midst of poverty, in the midst of wealth, have risen above their culture to follow Christ. Our people need to see that it is not impossible to topple idle mammon and to exalt the risen Christ in our daily lives, our businesses and our financial dealings. Our people don't just need to know about the Hudson Taylors, the Billy Grahams, right? Come on. Where are the Arthur and Lewis Tappins of today? C.T. Studsworth says, Only one life twill soon will pass. Only what's done for Christ will last. And John Wesley said, I judge all things only by the price that they shall gain for eternity. 434, you under the sound of my voice, your business, many of you are in real estate. Many of you have other businesses. God wants you to take your business and make eternal impact through your business, just like Arthur and Lewis Tappan. God's calling on Lewis Tappan, R.G. Turneau, and Stanley Tam was just as great. Hear me, hear me. It was just as great. The call on their life was just as great as the call on John Wesley or Billy Graham or Pastor Rodney Howard Brown as they reached out in the God-given sphere of influence that someone like John Wesley could have never reached. Only God's going to be able to do through you what these other people that are called to other realms can't do. They expanded that sphere of influence through their giving. Acts 434, they're giving the first day when we launched this ministry to you. We told you about Acts 434, they gave. And I don't mean $100. Maybe I'll read this to you tomorrow, but the Bible, uh, the story I read says this was in the 1800s. They gave no less than $50,000 to $100,000 a year. That was in the 1800s. God's not impressed by your hundred bucks or your thousand bucks or even your 10,000 bucks. This is 2022, my friends. Or if you're watching this on YouTube five years from now, come on, it's time for you to take your business, take the wealth the Lord's given you and instead of storing it up in some foundation in some trust, listen, this is the last days. I'm talking about the heartbeat of an end time entrepreneur. I'm looking for the Arthur and Lewis Tappins of today. Their sphere expanded through their giving and reached the uttermost parts of the world, even if they rarely left their own cities. And one day they will worship God. I believe they're worshiping God right now beside the people of every language and every tribe and every nation. Let's teach our people it's good to work for a living. It's good to make money for the glory of God. Spend it and give it for the glory of God. It's good to work enough to make more money than you need. Well, I got enough just for me. Well, how about you make a couple more million? Good you've got what you need and give the rest for the furtherance of the gospel in every sphere. How about the media? How about education? How about business? How about in the church circles, revival meetings? stadium meetings where you fund it, you underwrite it. And I got good news for you. You will receive the same reward as the preacher or the minister who brought the ministry. You funded it. They brought the ministry and you funded it. You'll get the same reward as them. Philippians 1. Paul says, you'll receive the grace you partnered with me, Philippians. You're going to receive the same grace that's on me comes upon you. That it may be accredited to your heavenly account. It's good to work for money, but 
Paul says in Ephesians 4, he who has been stealing must steal no longer, must work. Do something useful with your hands that he may, that he may what? Have not just enough to live on? No, that he may have something to share with those in need. Are you ready to take your business and give it to God's purposes? Make Jesus the CEO of your company, that everything is about eternity. Everything with your business is about eternity. You get involved in God's business, you watch God getting involved in your business. How about for seeing health, health? How about food? How about you come with innovation and inspiration with things that have never been created that will help and solve problems in today's society? Who? You. We should not work just because it's healthy to care for our families, but to use the excess income to help the needy and to reach the lost. If your heart is right now, your spirit is leaping. Come on, put in the chat right now. Let me know if I'm talking to the right group of people today. I'm looking for entrepreneurs. I'm looking for business people that are just as sold out for the furtherance of the gospel as Billy Graham, Rodney Howard Brown, Charles Finney, Smith Wigglesworth. I'm looking for the Arthur and Lewis Tappins of this time. Who are the Lewis Tappins in your church? The Stanley Tams, the R.G. Letourneau's, and yes, the Amy Carmichael's, William Borden's, and the John Wesley's. Are they being sucked down in the black hole of materialism where all that matters is your bank account and your belly? Come on. Again, you're, you're, you're making a million dollars a year. You think God's impressed with you giving 10,000 bucks? Come on, I'm telling you that your whole heart, some of you today need to make a decision. I'm putting my whole heart and you need to do something today that will show God you're serious. Do something today that God, you'll show God you got my attention today. Everything's changing today. My business is about your purposes in my generation. Are they being sucked down to materialism? Are they being freed from the gravita gravitational hold of mammon because their pastors are giving them a new center of gravity? That's what I'm doing you today. That your business put in the hands of Jesus will have eternal impact. People will thank you in heaven because you did that business. Because you, you, you advanced and you stretched maybe sleepless nights. You did, went the extra mile in your business because it was attached to the gospel. How many potential servants are being lost to mammon? where the risen Christ beckons them to be joyful, life-singing, community-changing, and world-changing. I'm looking for men and women like that. I wanted to bring you this biography today, this story today of two brothers that were in business in New York City. It was said that they underwrote most or much of Charles Finney's ministry, the, the, the second great awakening that in the late 1700s, the early 1800s, as this country, the United States of America, as we were going through a revolutionary war, the, there was an awakening, there was a spiritual awakening, and God raised up ministers, and you've heard of many of them, but maybe you have never heard of Arthur and Lewis Tappan. I may expand on this tomorrow, because they made impact in many of the, right, the credit reporting, slavery, all of children, they made much impact. Of course, they underwrote the ministry. How about you? How about you? So now you start setting your sights higher. Why? Because it's not just about your second vacation home, your boat. It's not just about your 401k. Those are all fine. Those are all good. God wants your barns to be full and your, your, uh, uh, your want your, to brim over with new wine. He wants you to do that. How do you do that? Honor the Lord with your wealth, the first fruits of all your increase. Then your barn shall be full. Proverbs 3, 8 and 9. So 434, I believe we are raising up men and women that are the Arthur and Lewis Tappins of today. God's Holy Spirit will come upon you just like he does the preacher. You'll have strength. You'll have insight. You'll have strategy. You'll have favor. You'll have blessing. People are going to ask you, what happened to you? How did you fly so high and so fast? 
If that's you today, if I'm talking to you today, I want to know who I'm talking to today. I'm telling you what one business person today could change the trajectory of a nation. One, one business person. I've heard some beautiful stories lately of some business people that have absolutely partnered with a minister partnered. I'm all in I, anything that's on your heart. I'm funding it to the best of my ability and God doing mighty things. I'm hearing of business meetings that are like revival meetings, people getting healed, people getting saved in a business meeting where there's no compartments. If I'm talking to you, I want you to email me 434 nation at gmail.com. I want to know who you are. I want you to write me, email me, and you tell me what God's putting on your heart. 434 Nation. Share this broadcast to everybody you know that's in business that, that claims to love Jesus. Forward this to them. Share it with them. That's why I wanted to come on the public page today so we, this can be shared. This message needs to be shared all throughout the nations of the world. Calling all end time entrepreneurs. Who will fund the cause of Christ? And remember, that's the preaching and the ministry. That's in health. That's in education. That's in food. That's in entertainment. That's in media. Many different ways. God is looking for Arthur and Lewis Tappens today. And here you are listening to this broadcast. I believe God's speaking to you. I'm going to encourage you to do something today. When you, the Bible says, unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, faith is doing something. Faith is not just some, you know, oh, I hope. No, faith is action. Ask the woman with the issue of blood. I want you to take some action today. This is between you and God. I would recommend if you're in business that you would take a chunk of money today, that you would let God know, hey, I'm in. I'm now, I'm making you the owner. I'll, I'll, I'll manage it. You own it. I'll be the steward. You own it. And do something today to let the Lord know. The Bible says in Acts 10 about Cornelius, he sent up the flares that got heaven's attention. I want you to do something today. Hey, maybe you did something in days gone by. Maybe in the days gone by, some of you, you may have given millions to the gospel. I want to let you know, there's people under the sound of my voice that are very, very wealthy. Everyone is not looking to just sell their first house. You may have given millions to the gospel. That's great. But maybe you've shrunk back. Maybe you've used natural reasoning. Listen, those monies. Now, the Bible wants you to, right, that you'll leave an inheritance for your children's children. But there is no greater investment than investing into the gospel, into eternity. That men, women, and children, that whole societies and nations would be changed. That you would come up with solutions to the problems of today. Who? You. Yeah, you. You're on this broadcast. I believe God has chosen you as one of those chosen select people that God has brought into the kingdom for a time such as this. So, if God's speaking to you, I want you to email me. 434 nation at gmail.com. If you want to sow a seed into this marketplace ministry, let me know. You can sow a seed into this ministry. Thank you to all of our partners. If you believe messages like this need to be sprung out into the marketplace and you want to help this ministry, email me 434 nation at gmail.com. I believe God is raising up business people. You will go to a whole nother level for it is God. Remember the Lord, your God, for it is he who gives you power to create wealth. Why? To confirm his covenant in your generation. The blessing that was on Abraham, Genesis 12 2, that by one chapter in Genesis 13 to Abraham became rich. That blessing came upon him. His children, Isaac, became very rich. His children, Jacob, his grandchildren, became very rich. This blessing, when you partner with what you're doing with God, you say, God, I'm partnering you. Start at 10%, but that's just the start. That's just the start. Some of you need to up it 
20, 30, 50% of all that you give me, God. You watch. You can't outgive God. You cannot outgive God. He gave you Jesus. His treasury is unending. You're not going to bankrupt God. Trust me. And the Bible says this, give and it will be given back to you. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. What is it that burns in your heart? I pray today a fire that gets in your heart that'll cause you to lose sleep. This will stir in your spirit today. And I believe that many of you, you're going you're gonna to make impact today. That eternity is going to write your story down. Just like we're reading today about Arthur and Lewis Tappan, business people in New York City. Email me. 434nation at gmail.com. Share the broadcast with everybody you know. I'm looking forward to hearing your story. 434, they took their business, the proceeds from their business, and they attached it to what Jesus is doing in the earth. Calling all end-time entrepreneurs. Is that you?